how do we go backwards in time? Then? Okay. Let's suppose that I was looking at a black hole. Let's talk about what a black yes, hole is. Yes, what is it? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. What a black hole is, is just simply a star. The way in which stars, our sun is a good example of an mm -hmm. ordinary star. What's happening is, is that right now, it's actually what's known as a hydrogen burning engine. What I mean by that is, is that essentially our sun is a gas ball of hydrogen and gravity pulls the hydrogen atoms together to form helium. Okay. When that happens, if you were to measure a little bit of the difference between the mass of the original uh, hydrogen atoms that collide and the resulting helium, you would find that the mass of the original hydrogen atoms colliding is actually a little greater than the mass of the resulting helium. What happens to that little bit of mass that's difference between that? There's a very famous equation coming back to Einstein again called e equals mc squared. Mm -hmm which says that mass is equivalent to energy. That little bit of difference of mass is converted into energy. That energy is what we get that gives us life here on Earth. So when the sun, the gravitational forces are pulling the hydrogen atoms together mm -hmm. to form helium, the little bit of energy, mass that's different from that is energy that we get here on the earth, okay? Now, eventually what will happen is, is that as time goes on, this fuel, you might think, go, starts getting used up like anything else. Mm -hmm. There will be a time in which there will be no more burning. When that happens, the star, what kept the sun going, you might say the internal heat pressure which was pushing the sun out, okay, was being balanced by gravity, which was pulling things in, in the sun. What will happen is, is that when that gives out, gravity will overwhelm the star. Mm -hmm. This happens with our sun, and our sun will start to collapse. Now, if we look at stars that are a little bit more massive than our sun, when they start to collapse, gravity starts getting greater around the star. Now, you don't think about it, but the fact is, is that light, in a sense, you might say, has some sort of a, a mass equivalent. It has, you know, weight, essentially. So, so as gravity gets stronger, light will find it harder to get out of the star. There will come a point when the star starts to collapse to a certain point where the gravity of that star becomes so great that the light that tries to get out of the star gets pulled back to the star. Okay. So imagine that you're standing outside mm -hmm. and the star is collapsing. And all of a sudden, all of the light that tries to get out of the star gets pulled back to the star. What will you see if you're outside the star? You'll see it like it, it winks out because you can't see it anymore. Right. That's a black hole. A black hole is just simply a star that has collapsed to a point where the gravity is so great around the star that all the light that tries to escape gets pulled back to the star. And so all you would see is a black hole in space because all the light gets pulled back to the star. So going back to your clear rubber sheet analogy. So it would be the equivalent of like a hole being poked yeah, in? Yeah, that's, it, it, it's right, that's right. Okay. So it, it gets so steep, you might say. Got it, it breaks the, okay. Right, that, very good. That, How do we actually explore black holes and study them? Well, the original way that we did it was indirectly because you can't see the black hole. But right, it was with right. what were known as binary stars. These are stars okay. that are very common. What they are are just simply stars that are orbiting each other. Mm -hmm. And one of the first of these was a star that was called Cygnus X1 in the constellation Cygnus. Yes. What it is is that it was a, a, a white dwarf star, okay, that was in orbit essentially around a black hole. Now, the gases from the star, I'm sorry, not a white dwarf, it was actually a blue giant. Sorry, it was a blue giant. There are stars, I'm thinking of other 
uh, systems that have that. Mm -hmm. But this the particular one I'm thinking about, Cygnus X1, what it was was the blue giant star. The, How big it, is that compared to the sun? Oh, uh, if you had a blue giant star, it would uh, it would swallow up all of the inner planets in our system. So the sun's here, the blue giant star would be bigger. Than big our enough. whole solar system. Yeah. Right, it would sw wow. it would be it oh would God. in other words a blue giant star would be that big, okay? So the thing and it has a blue it has a blue cast to it. That's why you know. So the thing is is that what happened, however, is that we could actually see a wobble of this blue giant star. We couldn't see what was causing it, mm -hmm. but the gases of the blue giant star were being funneled into an invisible companion, and it created a halo. You might say the gases heated up. Oh wow! As they orbited the invisible companion, and so even though we couldn't see the uh, inner side of the invisible companion, we could see the halo. That's how we knew that was the first black hole. So it's like rotating around a black hole. The uh, the well, this blue giant stars, yeah, it's essentially orbiting. So eventually it's going to go into the black hole. Eventually all the, right, all the gases will be pulled in it and, up, and the black hole will get bigger, by the way, as the gases are being funneled into the black hole. Right. The black hole actually gets bigger the more it takes in. Wow. Okay. That was the original one. Okay. okay. The more recent How one. How far away is that? Oh, let's see. I'm trying to remember the exact. You know, uh, distance, but but it's it's not close. Not close. <laughs> no, yeah, no. thank God. But the uh, one that that has been seen originally, th th that was indirect observation. That is to yeah. say, we didn't actually see directly okay. the black hole. What we saw was the gases that were orbiting the black hole. Uh -huh. Okay, right, because they're invisible. You just have to right. measure the light that's moving right. around. Exactly. It. That's exactly right. The ones that have been uh, more recently. This is about uh, 2017, mm -hmm. okay? And it, the Nobel Prize was won mm -hmm. for this, was the fact that they have now have direct observation of a black hole. You might say, what, how, how was that? Right. Well, suppose that you actually have two stars that are orbiting each other, mm -hmm. okay? And imagine that, that as they're orbiting, their orbits become closer and closer and closer, okay? and they smash into each other, mm -hmm. okay? When they smash into each other, what they do is they cause these ripples in space that we were talking about called gravity waves. Remember, gravity waves are actually just ripples of space. Okay. So if you have the two stars orbiting and then colliding with each other, they will actually cause a vibration of space. In anticipation of that, here on the Earth, we set up you might say they were actually uh, gravity wave antennas so that whenever they two stars collided in space, these ripples of space were happening, they were actually being uh, received here on the Earth. Oh, and wow. we actually have uh, antennas, you might say, gravity, because called LIGO. Is this what da LIGO? Yeah, we had a guy in here named David Chester, who's also a physicist based out in California. Yeah. LIGO is- He was telling us about this. Right. LIGO are the gravity detectors, okay? Okay. All right, so they detected, what they actually detect are these ripples of space itself, the gravity waves. And so we're able to actually observe the black hole itself directly. And now, not, these things, I, from what I understand, um, the LIGO technology can like create earthquakes or detect earthquakes or something? Uh, in principle, they Something to do could. with earthquakes, he was saying. But their primary purpose was to, to detect gravity waves from space. That's what they were set up to do. Okay. Okay. And the way they actually do it is use laser beams that are at a different angle, sort uh -huh. of 90 degree angle. And then what happens is, is that as the, uh, remember when I said a gravity wave is actually a bending of space itself. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you have um, a laser beam that's going this way and one that's going you know, this way. And imagine a gravity wave is coming in. It's gonna change the distance because gravity waves are a warping of space itself. It's gonna change the distance of the two arms of the uh, antenna. Right. And that's what you actually see 
Oh wow! Okay. So you, what you're what you're really measuring is the warping of space itself, right? Due to the occlusion of these black holes. Mm. That was direct okay. observation. Of okay. It. Okay. So how do these black holes? I right, understand so, what a black hole is. Okay. So a black hole, but now there are actually two different categories of black holes. Okay. There are non-rotating black holes, and there are rotating black holes. Okay. And a non-rotating black hole just causes a warping of space, that intense warping, mm -hmm. okay? But now a rotating black hole will cause two, uh, it has that same warping, but it causes a twisting of effect. What, one of the things that I like to give people an example of that, in fact, uh, if we had a cup of coffee here, I would be able to, to show it to you directly, is think of the coffee as being like empty space, I can get you a cup if you want one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want me to show you on that, but I can I can imagine it. Right. Uh, the so imagine that that's the empty space. And now um, what Where the I, coffee would be the coffee would be empty okay. space. Okay. Got it. And suppose that I take and the way I do it in order to do um, sort of a demonstration, which I've done in some of the uh, documentaries that I've done, mm -hmm. is. Um, I put a little bit of cream in the coffee so you can actually see a contrast. And right. I put a little coffee bean yeah. in there. So let's suppose that I take a spoon okay. and I start s swirling the coffee around. Okay, mm -hmm. That's what a rotating black hole is doing to empty space. So not only is the uh, black hole causing a warping of space, but it's causing a twisting of space. Mm -hmm. And the way in which you can see that in the case of... Uh, I, that's the reason why I use a, a coffee bean. As I say, that if you want to see want to see the effect, then you can just put a coffee bean in there, and as you're twisting the coffee around, it will cause the coffee bean to be twisted around. Okay. okay. All right. That's what um, rotating black hole does. Now we actually can see this effect here on the Earth using the Earth. The Earth is rotating, so not only is the Earth warping space. The Earth, as it rotates, is twisting space, okay? But now with the black hole, this twisting, the rotating black hole is causing an extreme twisting of space. Now, remember what I said, that is whatever it is you do to space also happens to time. Think of time, and in fact, this is something that I can do if you have a piece of paper sure. for me. Oh, you can use this one. Okay. Here's a pen. Perfect. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do on this strip of paper is draw a timeline. Okay. At the bottom of the line, mm -hmm. I'm going to put yesterday, the past. Okay. At the middle of the line, I'm going to put the present. And at the top of the line, I'm going to put the future. Now, throughout our entire life, this is the way we experience time. Okay. Yesterday, here, doing the podcast today, right. and tomorrow. Okay. Now... This is space, remember. This timeline is in the space of the paper. Okay? okay. Perfect. The timeline is in the space of the paper. So you might say this is this is space and this is time in the space. Okay? But now suppose that I had an object that was rotating space. Now let's see what would be happening to this timeline. This is yesterday. Mm -hmm. I continue along to today. Okay? I continue along to tomorrow. But look what I've done. I've twisted space so that it has twisted time into a loop. And so what can I do? I can go from the future to where? To the past. Right. So by twisting space, I can twist time into a loop. And in fact, if you read scientific papers that talk about that. Physicists don't like to openly talk about going back in time. They use the term CTCs, closed time curves. Closed time curves. Closed time curves okay. refer to the fact that if I have a 
object that's rotating space, it can cause closed loops in time. Ah. And these closed loops in time can lead to the possibility of time travel of the past.